Hello and welcome. Haiti has had more than its share of problems, including the massive and deadly earthquake one year ago. But why has the small, impoverished nation struggled so hard to rebuild not only its infrastructure, but its tattered image as the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere? The death of around a quarter of a, a million people in that earthquake, which uh, left more than a million homeless, shone the spotlight of the international media on the Caribbean state, focusing largely on the destitution, despair and plea for international help. But there are, there are those who feel that Haiti is being misrepresented, ignoring the country's resilient nature, vibrant cultural heritage, and its ability to come together as a strong community. And that's been left out of the picture, encouraging the old negative stereotypes to linger. Now a number of artists are coming forward to say, enough is enough. So today we ask, what will it take for Haiti to move past all the negative perceptions in order to rebuild its image as a vibrant nation? Remember, you can join the conversation with your questions and comments. You can send an SMS or an email, and we also welcome your phone calls onto the show. Well, joining me to discuss these issues are Haitian artist Edouard Duval Carrier, whose work has reflected much of Haiti's culture and history, particularly drawing from the country's ancient voodoo religious roots. He is joining us from Miami. In Durham, North Carolina, is Dr. Laurent Dubois, who specializes in the history and culture of uh, France and the Caribbean. Dr. Dubois is also the co-director of the Haiti Lab at Duke University. And here in the studio with me is Eugène Jean, whose film directorial debut, Lift Up, follows his journey back to his native Haiti shortly after the earthquake, as he and his brother paid their respects to their recently deceased grandfather. Gentlemen, I welcome you all to the show. Thank you for having me. Hello. Dr. Dubois, I'm going to start with you, sir, and, uh, and ask you. Haiti, of course, has this, as I mentioned in the introduction, the generally negative image, and um, that's, that's prevalent around the world, and particularly in the West. I wonder what aspects of that image are accurate, and what in particular is really being misunderstood and misrepresented about Haiti? Well, I think the, the kind of headlines always have a sense of this, of the poverty and, and destitution in Haiti, and those are certainly uh, issues that, that confront the country. But what's lost is, are the historical roots of that, of, that hist of that situation, and the way in which the country has an extremely long history, not only of struggling uh, to sort of get, to, to get out of that situation, but also of struggling against very negative, not only negative stereotypes, but negative policies directed against it. So it's a country that's had a very, very long history of struggle, and I think sometimes those get lost, as well as just simply the way in which the country has in fact succeeded at certain times, its, its successes, its democratic culture. Many aspects of it get erased when we think of it too simply. Well, Dr. Dubois, I'm going to ask you to answer an email question we had from Kenya. Uh, and a viewer by the name of William Nunda wrote in from Nairobi saying, the hopeless image created by the mainstream media is not doing Haiti any good. The media should report on inspiring stories and give people hope. So I wonder to what degree that, that negative stereotyping in the media in particular has been responsible for what's going on. Well, I think the negative stereotypes play a role in, in simplifying uh, the, the questions of Haiti. And then they, that, that produces kind of simple answers. And that's, the, that's really the problem. This is a very diverse country. It's a country with incredible human resources, with incredible natural resources, and a, and a kind of capacity to overcome enormous difficulties in the past. So if we focus too simply on, on a kind of sense of the negative, we, we, we first of all don't understand the country. But also, I think it, it actually gets in the way of, of providing constructive assistance as well. Right. Well, Edouard uh, Duval Carrier, I want to to welcome you into the show and, and ask you a little bit about your work with Dr. Dubois on the Haiti Lab. Uh, and I wonder what the main purpose of it is and how you've managed to shape the opinions of, of Haitians and Haiti through the work with the lab. Well, I mean, we hope to, uh, to create a much more wi a wider uh, vision of uh, the complexity of uh, what Haiti represents today and what it represented in the past. And uh, I think that visually, you know, like this is something that can be done in a very effective way. And, I tr and I've tried myself, you know, like to delve into the history of Haiti itself and uh, bring about, you know, like a, a much more uh, complex vision than the one that has been, you know, like uh, portrayed in the press and in the, uh, in the actual uh, reports we have today. Edouard, uh, uh, an email for you, if I may, sir, from Canada, uh, where a viewer by the name of Kerem Termandi wrote in saying, a focus on disaster is hardly surprising given the severity of the earthquake. Nevertheless, coverage of Haitian culture would provide a ray of uh, sunshine in an otherwise very gloomy and depressing Haitian state of affairs. And I wonder, in what way has, the art, uh, has art, such as yours, for example, helped to bring the Haitian community together? Well, the, uh, one thing for sure is that one, that's something that still can be produced at, uh, locally and uh, presented in a, in, a, in a positive way, you know, like uh, abroad. And uh, we have been uh, very uh, keen on, on making sure that the artists, despite the fact that a lot of them are in total distress, manage to, con uh, to continue their work and to produce and to find new venues abroad for their work. 
and uh, we've managed to do so through the, uh, an organization called the Haitian Art Relief Fund. And we are still raising money and we're still organizing, you know, like exhibits that are being presented actually right now here in Miami at the airport, elsewhere, maybe in Paris in a few months uh, uh, at a space called the Agnes Bay Space. So, I mean, I think that's one way uh, uh, that these artists can, first of all, speak of what uh, the devastation that has, hap that has uh, happened down there, but also to present, you know, like a much more coherent and much more complex vision of what they're there. How they're portraying, you know, like the, uh, how it is being portrayed, and how they want to be portrayed themselves. All right. Well, Yugen Jean, it's good to have you with us as well here. Thank you for having I, me. Pleasure. And you, you, you had an interesting journey back to Haiti, you know, having left there when you were younger, and you went back with your brother Clifford. Tell me about that journey. Uh, and uh, it was basically something you'd promised your grandfather, wasn't it? Well, it, it started as a, as a uh, as a promise to our grandfather, but it transformed into something else. So um, shortly after the quake happened, we decided that we we're going to go back to Haiti and try to build a special kite for him because our promise to him was to make sure that, you know, if he, if he was to pass away, we we're going to go back to the funeral and make sure that we carry the coffin all the way to its resting place. Right. And we were not able to do this after the earthquake, but um, with, with this entire idea of the kite, what we we're going to do was go back to Haiti and build a kite and then use the kite as a symbol um, of hope, you know, uh, an image so that, you know, to represent um, the uh, us carrying that coffin, right. us lifting him up to the, to the final place. I'm going to show our viewers uh, um, a little bit, an excerpt of that film, uh, the documentary film you made called Lift Up, where, where they refer to the kites here. En Haïti, nous avons une culture, nous avons demandé de prier. Par exemple, si nous avons des feux, des bagages de l'armée qui vivent, nous avons demandé de prier à la capa. Nous avons un petit fil et nous avons monté. Mais à Nesa, nous n'avons pas fait de prier à ce cap-là. Nous avons des mamans qui sont morts dans le tremblement de terre. This is one part of the, the spirit of the Haitian people and the optimism people have and the, their ability to, to celebrate life as opposed to, to simply mourn death that has helped them get through the earthquake, isn't it? Definitely. When we went down there, it's like we didn't know what to expect. Um, we, we had an idea, we had this picture in our mind and we were hoping that we were going to find it because we were just gonna, we were just going, going from what we remember as children going, growing up in Haiti. But then, to our surprise, it's like when we got down there, it was still there, you know, that hope, that resilience. And we were amazingly grateful to be able to capture it on tape. And our promise to the people there was like, we, we're going to make sure that the world gets to see this. The world gets to see how strong you are, how, how, how hopeful you are. And, and hopefully, you know, it's like, it's, you hear all the time, you know, people sending, sending, sending help to Haiti. I feel like when people get to see this film, it's like, it's almost as if they were sending help to the rest of us. Right. Well, let me get uh, Dr. Dubois back in here and ask, uh, uh, ask you how you feel that the Haitian diaspora has helped in terms of keeping the, the Haitian community united and to be able to, I guess, uh, to, to shape the recovery of Haiti. Well, I think it's played a really crucial role and, and will continue to do so more and more. It's a huge population, especially in the United States, but elsewhere in, in the world. And um, it's, it's very important for people to have access to, to different kinds of voices. And certainly um, the writers and artists in the Haitian diaspora have played a, a central role in changing the image. And I think it's one of the reasons why, in fact, the images are starting to change. Um, and I have hope that, in fact, uh, there's, a, there's a more and more complex vision of Haiti being presented in the United States and elsewhere, thanks to, thanks to their work. Well, let's get a caller in. Reginald in Fiji, good to hear from you. It's been a while. How are you doing? Oh, good, good. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. I'm not too familiar with the Haitian uh, scenario, but are the Haitians uh, agriculturalists? Do they like to plant food and uh, you know and increase their, their uh, or decrease their poverty? Thank you. Okay, let me let, uh, perhaps uh, Edouard uh, Duval Carrier can put that to you. Uh, Reginald's question is: Are, are uh, Haitian people essentially agriculturalists? Do they do they tend to to want to be able to plant and grow things, and perhaps could I guess to some degree uh, create some self sustainability through that? Uh, well, that's one of the aspects that this country, you know, like uh, should uh, revive and and uh, uh, promote. But I mean, the, the the proximity of Haiti to the United, to different markets should also provide, you know, like other ven uh, other usage for the for the type of uh, uh, I mean uh, the amount of population that there is there. I mean, education, of course, is a big problem there. But I mean, you know, like it has to be tackled with and and uh, done in a proper way so that we can compete you know like uh, in a prop in a, in a much more equitable way 
in in promoting our our, our uh, agriculture uh, and other type of productions. Let me uh, uh, actually get a question that we got by email from Pakistan uh, to you, perhaps, uh, Yugens. It's, uh, it's from Sohail Ahmed in Lahore, who wrote in saying, you know, you'd mentioned about aid being going out to Haiti. It says, Haitians are already in a quagmire and engulfed in their own problems. They cannot get out unless someone else offers to help, uh, help to try to pull them out. Negative images and comments will only exacerbate their woes. But that, that idea that they need someone to help pull them out, how do you feel when you, you hear that kind of sentiment? Well, well e sorry, sorry, uh, Edward, this is for uh, you guys who's in the studio with me. So when we went, when we went to Haiti and, and pretty much we had this concept of a film and we were not sure exactly how we we're going to make that come to life. To tell you the truth, it was the people there that helped us bring the film to life because when we got to the neighborhood, we didn't know anybody, we didn't know where to go, right. but they had already organized themselves so that so that the stories that we we're looking for all we have to do is talk to somebody and they will take us exactly to that person they already had you know talked to them and and and, and kind of organize them organize, organize themselves in a way to to make sure that whatever help was going to come that that help was going to get to the people that needs it the most so mm -hmm. This idea that um, you know it's like they sit in there and, and waiting for help to come it's yes in a way for for the big stuff you know the stuff they cannot move some of some of this rubble by themselves right, without yeah. the proper tool but they they are down there you know organized within their community and and and, and able to complement whatever so they are able the idea they is they're definitely able. Yeah, exactly. definitely yeah, they are definitely able to kind of take advantage of the stuff that they cannot do by themselves but yeah. the stuff that they can do by themselves you know they are right. they're surviving down there now, Dr. Laurent Dubois, there, there's of course a tricky thing with, with Haiti because there's, there's the history, it's had its colonial history and all kinds of issues that tie into the modern Haiti as well uh, and, and the image and stereotyping that occurs. Now, I wonder how can Haiti balance the need to progress uh, while maintaining its, its uh, you know, cultural heritage? Well, I think that that, her that history is absolutely essential because you have to realize that Haiti was a country founded out of a successful slave revolution. So this was the destruction of a plantation system and an attempt to create something new in its place. These were enslaved people who created a new society. It's a completely unique history. Uh, and when they did so, the, they, they set up a set of, of, of aspirations for autonomy, for dignity, for self-sufficiency that have continued to be very important. As, as the caller mentioned earlier, the question of agriculture, they wanted to set something up where they could really sustain their own society in the face of incredible hostility abroad. Right. Um, so in a sense, the, host the history is actually, I think, a source of sustenance and inspiration because that's been a, it's a, been a history of successful struggle against enormous odds. Um, so in a sense, looking to the past is, is very much linked to looking to the future, I think, because the past provides a, a sense of, of, of all the obstacles people have overcome and, prov and provides a sense that they can do so again today. Now, Edouard duval Carrier, of course, there is uh, the issue of the cultural heritage that comes through the art, and that's something that you obviously uh, promote very heavily, and it's something that you're central to your artwork focuses quite heavily on on the voodoo traditions of Haiti which of course to the West is something not fully understood often seen as as threatening or negative and I wonder what you believe to be misrepresented about that and what you try to do in your art to try to make people understand it better well to first of all I mean uh, uh, it, it's a religion like any other ones it's just a, a set of beliefs that it makes sure that uh, that are uh, that were brought from Africa to this new world and that permitted the, uh, I mean, very downtrodden people that were put in uh, the most severe conditions, uh, which were the ones, you know, like as, uh, as a plantation uh, economy dur during the uh, slavery. And uh, uh, they had to have the belief of something into something that would permit them to keep their dignity and to continue on. And this is what I try to show in, uh, uh, with my work, that voodoo is nothing to be maligned. At, at the contrary, it's a series of beliefs that managed, you know, like to, to have kept the Haitians, you know, like afloat uh, amongst a sea of misery that they were, they've, they've been put through, through in the past 200 years. And now to put through the test with such, you know, like a, a, a severe shakedown of their mm -hmm. core, let's say. And while we're looking, as, as you speak there, at uh, one of your artworks, it's, it's a fascinating piece here, a very intricate piece called Memory Without History. Explain that briefly to our viewers, the title and what it's trying to depict. 
And what I'm trying to depict in that in that in that particular work is the the, the cyclical and the circular way Haiti has gone through its uh, uh, the history of Haiti has been repeating itself. I mean, first you know, like slave a, a boat a boats uh, full of slaves were brought from Africa, and now today boats full of Haitians are like leaving the country. But at the same time, you know, like I mean, you know, like what wh what are they bringing, and wh who are these people? And I'm trying to show what they what they had to go through, you know, like to. To, for people to understand, you know, like w why, you know, like this, this is all, all happening. Right. So this particular piece is like a, a, a breakdown of Haiti's history in very few uh, elements, uh, such as, you know, like the, the, the stay of 32 years uh, of a dictatorship called the Duval by, the people, by the Duvalier family right. and other th things like that. You okay. understand? Well, Eugens, let, let's look at another um, excerpt from your film, uh, Lift Up, the documentary. And here it's where you talk to an artist who uses um, the, the earthquake as a metaphor for Haiti itself. Haiti is always in the water. There are a lot of people in the water. Physically, even the artists in Haiti are the ones who are living in the water. Maybe it's not because you don't know it. There are artists who are living in the water. There are artists who are living in the water. There are artists who are living in the water. Le troisième terme de la terre, c'est parce qu'il y a une vraie réalité, même depuis que je suis fait, je ne vais pas faire ça. Je ne vais pas faire ça. Je ne vais pas faire ça comme si je ne vais pas faire ça. Ça, c'est ce que je prends. Je ne vais pas faire ça. 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 Now, again, listening to this artist, it sounds like he, he accepts the, the, the pain and difficulties the, that Haiti has gone through and that almost this, this uh, natural disaster, this earthquake a year ago, was almost an extension of some of the other stuff Haiti has gone through as well. Yeah, that interview was probably my favorite interview because in that interview, you, you get a sense of, it's like the reality of Haiti, um, a bit of the history of Haiti. He says, um, you know, there are many forms of earthquakes and um, he talks about the earthquakes that happen within people and also the, the actual earthquake that happens um, in, in, in the real world with the, with the buildings and everything. So I think um, the one thing that he was trying to get across here is this idea that, you know, there's, there's this thing that people have to feed themselves with, their spirit, and, you know, and, and it's the art, it's, it's, it's their work, their craft. And he said, you know, once, once I have my paintbrush, you know, that's all I need um, because, you know, that's my hope, that's my that's 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 what keeps me going and and i and i think you know it's it gives you a sense of what what these people are about you know it, it's not about you know come and help me but it's like they have so much to offer and and, and if only you know there was a structure to allow them to um get that message across and i feel like you know through this film you know you kind of you get a bit of that um of that message well, Laurent Dubois, of course, you know, listening to, to Eugens there, of course, it, it's, 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 um, it's, it's heartening to listen to the positive side of Haiti, when, of course, the media has largely used terms such as the world's poorest nation or the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere and uh, the Republic of NGOs referring to the number of non-governmental organizations there. And I wonder what can be done to help remove some of these labels that, that keep, keep the negative stereotype of Haiti alive so much? Well, part of it is, I mean, both a sense of humility and responsibility. The thing is that Haiti's history has been incredibly intertwined with that of other countries, the United States and elsewhere, for the last 200 years. So there's a kind of shared responsibility for what's going on. In other words, it's easy to project things onto Haiti that are, in fact, the result of much larger processes. So that's, I think, one sense, is just for people to get a broader sense of, of why Haiti is, is where it is, not as something simply about the country, but as, as a reflection of some broader things. Um, the second, I think, is for people to gain a sense of, you know, really what it is that Haitians are looking for, what they're seeking, what they've developed out of their own historical experience as aspirations. And that's why the work of artists and, and writers is so crucial, because it gives us a crucial insight into that. Um, I think the more people can learn about the language, the more the culture, they will, for, for one thing, gr get, get a great deal themselves, because it's an incredibly rich and, and a culture that, that supplies all kinds of insights into humanity um, in a broader sense. But it's also a way of really getting a sense of this country as, some, as a place that has been constantly affected by and, and affecting uh, s situations outside itself. Well, uh, Edouard Duval-Carrier, let me ask you about another piece of your art that we we're going to show our viewers here uh, called Tainted Mutant, where you use microbes now here as a depiction of Haitians to the outside world and, you know, the way, the way uh, Haitians have been treated, I guess, by the outside world. Explain that. Well, I mean, first of all, I, I mean, to continue what was be, that Laurent was uh, uh, saying, 
um, Haiti was part of a very important, you know, like movement two centuries ago in of liberation. You know, like I mean, the United States, Haiti, and other countries that were all, all across Latin America. But you know, like for a X, Y, and Z. And uh, I mean, this is not the moment to start discussing about. I mean, Haiti has been penalized for having, you know, like even dared uh, e e to wish for some liberties. Anyways, uh, to come back to your to your part that particular work, yes, there is a saying in Haiti that says that nous sommes les mais nous sommes là, nous les mais nous là. And uh, e I went there. I went e very far away, e very far with that particular saying. In that, yes, we we have been accused of, of carrying all types of microbes. The latest latest one in uh, uh, being cholera and etc. But at the same time, you know, like I mean, doesn't that look, painting look quite stunning to you? Mm -hmm. No, that's amazing. <laughs> now I wonder. You know, it's it's interesting because we had an email. Uh, if I can put it to you, Edouard, it's from. Uh, Barnabas Mavuti, a regular viewer who writes in, he said here, this is a case of Stockholm Syndrome. Haitians are trapped in the labels attributed to them and live up to the negative expectations. I hope someone is archiving the artist's work. Their effort is an integral aspect of the nation's heritage. How much, uh, I mean, of course, a lot was lost in the earthquake, but I mean, how much has there been an effort to keep the art of Haiti alive and put it out to the, the, the wider world in order that, so that they understand the Haitian story better, Edouard? Well, I think it's, it's as, I mean, as this gentleman is saying, it's crucial to, to, to make sure that this, uh, we, now we have to concentrate on the, one, the ones that are living. So we're trying to give, you know, like a utmost help to the ones that, that we can, that we can promote their works, have it presented uh, here and there. I'm not one of the, I'm, I mean, I'm one in the myriad of organizations that are like trying to do as much, but it's a, I think it's an essential thing to be done. And uh, e eventually, you know, like a much more complex vision of what Haiti really is all about will be presented. Laurel Dubal, I wonder, with, can, can Haiti easily move out of its victim mentality, considering how much it's got stacked against it? Um, well, I think so. I mean, I, I think that, again, there, that's just one side of Haitian culture, and there is, again, a sense of struggle, um, a sense of the need to move forward is a very, very key part of, of that culture as well. Um, obviously, in many ways, the, the broader context is, is extremely difficult to face, um, but I, I think that there, there is going to be uh, some, some progress. But the, I think one has to remember how massive this earthquake was, what a massive set of challenges uh, the country faces, and we really need to think intelligently about how, how to move forward um, to collectively. Well, you can just, uh, uh, I want to put an email to you that we got from Michigan in the USA from Linda Taylor who wrote in saying there is a huge problem getting aid to Haitians if you have to go through the Haitian government. Food rots in warehouses and ambulances sit in parking lots for months. It's not just negative images. In some cases it's factual. Now if those kind of problems remain unattended, presumably it's going to be very hard for Haiti to, to show it can move on. You know, from what you saw there, is, is it improving? Is the situation changing? Well, when I was down there, um, it, so one thing we heard, a, we heard a lot from the people was the fact that they were not getting the aid. Um, they, like in the film, when, when we, we go to the tent cities and, and a couple people are explaining to us that, you know, they've been here for a couple weeks and, and even there was like a person that was been there for a month and, and they were not getting the aid. So definitely it's going to be a barrier, you know, right. in trying to show the world that, you know, these people can move forward, you know, the Haitian people can move forward, but the majority of people, you know, are not in control of the distribution right. of that aid. So it's like, it's... Well, I hope by telling the story, uh, you know, the story through your film and through the artwork of Edouard as well and Laura, uh, Lauren Dubois' uh, work, we can actually change things. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for being with us. Uh, also, check out Al Jazeera's special coverage of Haiti, one year on. Remember, you can watch a podcast of the show on iTunes this week. We look at how tobacco companies are creating a new generation of smokers, as well as thousands of jobs in emerging markets. But at what point do the damaging health effects from smoking outweigh economic gains? On the next show, using comedy to break down negative cultural stereotypes, Indian-American actor and comedian Asif Manvi explains the message behind his new film, Today's Special, and the challenges of overcoming typecasting in Hollywood. Make sure you tune in for that. Now, as we leave you, here's a short excerpt from Eugène Jean's film, Lift Up. From me and the team, we'll see you next time.